episode of Batch Cooking with Live, Eat, and Be Well. So now we're gonna make some hummus. And this is gonna be a little experiment between me and you. And let me turn my dishwasher off because that's really noisy. Okay, so normally I use homemade chickpeas. And the trick to making this delicious homemade chickpea hummus is that you put a little bit of baking soda in the beans when they're cooking and they get super, super soft and creamy. But as you can see, I don't actually have very many. So I'm gonna dump these in and then I'm gonna supplement with some canned chickpeas. But I don't know how many cans yet because I usually just make homemade ones. So let's just dump these in. I think I have about a cup and a half. Okay. So gross bag now. Okay, and oh yeah, we can use a lot more. Okay, so here's another, this is one can, and one can is about a cup and a half. Uh, we can probably do another can. Okay, I thought we could do one more can. Okay, so let me show you the cans that we're using. Um, they're wild oats, marketplace organic, chick peas garbanzo beans. I guess they felt like they needed to say both. Okay, so I'm gonna open these, I'm gonna dump them out, rinse them in cold water, and then we're gonna come back and use Okay, them. so I added just one more can in here. So I wanna say that this is not a fat-free hummus recipe, but it's easily made fat-free if that's what you are looking for. Okay, so what makes this not fat-free for us is tahini. Now, I've tried making this without adding the tahini, but my husband always says it tastes weird without the tahini. So, whatever, boo to him. So, that, that was kind of gross. Tahini's like peanut butter, and the oil separates from the butter. It's actually sesame seed butter. So I'm going to just kind of scoop out some with my spoon. So for all of this, I'm going to put in about that much. I'd say that's probably a tablespoon and a half. We're just guesstimating. You put in what you like. Okay, so that's the optional part. So you can eliminate that and then it would not have so much fat in it, right? Um, now, we earlier, we roasted, actually, I'm gonna splice it in right here. Roasted garlic, here's how. So one tasty flavor that I like to have inside of my hummus is roasted garlic, and some of my garlic is sort of on the edge. So I'm going to roast the garlic. Um, while I'm making cookies with my batch cooking today, so my oven is set to 350 for the cookies. Normally I would roast garlic at 425 to 450. So this garlic's gonna take a little bit longer to roast because it's at 350, but the oven's already working, so we're just gonna use that. So what I like to do is cut the top of the garlic off like so. So now it's kind of just like the top is cut off like that. And then we're gonna take it and put it on a thing of tin foil. And then, I don't know, that one looks a little pinky. I think it's Then I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on it. I've tried roasting garlic without the olive oil and I just don't like the way it turns out. So, you know, we don't really eat a lot of oil in our family. And that was probably like, seriously two teaspoons of olive oil but it makes a huge difference in my opinion in the roasting process um and i think most of it stays on the skin okay so then i'm just going to wrap it up into like a little flour and i'm just going to set it on the actual oven um rack and roast it until when i touch it with my tongs it's soft and squishy okay so here's the end product I actually ended up leaving it in the oven for about 35 minutes. And this is the end product. You can see it's kind of squishy and roasted looking. So I'm gonna take all of this and just squeeze it 
out into into here. Um, now, if you don't want to roast your garlic, I would probably just put like maybe for this amount, maybe like three cloves of garlic, depending on how garlicky you like it. Again, when you make your hummus at home, it's totally customizable. So if you're not super into garlic, then don't add as much. Um, but roasted garlic is sweeter, so you get that flavor. Okay, I'm going to just speed up this section. Okay, now normally I would add lemon juice into this, but this week in Aldi's, limes were on sale for 13 cents a piece, and the lemons were not so cheap. So we're going to make lime and roasted garlic hummus. I don't know, limes taste good to me, so I don't care. So I'm going to add four limes for this amount. You could put about two lemons, I would say, depending on how juicy your limes and lemons are and how much you like. Again, it's totally customizable. So I'm just gonna squeeze these limes in there. And I have a video about the most handy kitchen tools. And this little citrus squeezer thing is definitely one of them. Okay, now I'm going to add some seasoning. So now you can totally, this is a great place to customize it. So you can add things like, this would be a great time to add like roasted red peppers if you wanted. Another great thing to add here would be jalapenos. I added that last time and it was super yummy. Um, but this time I'm going to add a couple pinches of chipotle seasoning in. And then I'm going to add in a couple pinches, well, I'm going to say that's probably about a teaspoon and a half of no salt seasoning. Okay, now I am not going to put any oil into this hummus and you may be curious about that. The way I'm going to do that, I have about two cups of broth here. I'm going to start, I'm just going to add a little bit in there. And then I'm going to take this and I'm making it in my food processor. You can make it in your blender as well. Now obviously I'm making a huge batch and you can batch size this down. You don't have to make this much at one time if you don't have such a big food processor. But um, you can also make this in your Vitamix. I don't like to make it in my Vitamix. I just don't think it turns out as good. It's harder to make it in a Vitamix you know, thick stuff doesn't make as good in the Vitamix. So I like to make it in my food processor. So I'm just gonna pulse this and I'm going to um, just make it go around. And then if, when I have to add more liquid, I'm gonna slow this back down and show you why. Okay, so I let this run for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna grab my here, which is underneath all this yucky, and show you. It's still super chunky. Can you see, can you see that? It's still super chunky. So we don't want our hummus to look like that. We want our hummus to be creamy delicious. So, I'm sorry. So I'm just going to add some more broth into that. And then I'm going to run it. And then now what I'm going to do is take off my handy dandy stopper thing. And then as it's running, I'm just going to add more broth if it needs it. Okay. So I'm going to do all of that. You're not going to hear me because that's annoying. And I'm just going to run it.
Okay, so it looks pretty good. It's pretty creamy. There's still a little, I'm gonna run yeah. it for another, yeah. I wanna make a video with my name be Swag Juice. Okay. I'm probably gonna run this for another minute or two, but I wanna taste test it. So let's see. For me, that would be perfect. But my husband is going to be the primary eater of this. So, I don't know if you heard this or not, but for me that would be perfect. But my husband's going to be the primary eater of this, so I'm going to add a couple shakes of pepper. And I'm going to add a couple more pinches of uh, um, chipotle seasoning. I call it Southwest seasoning. I'm trying to call it what it's called so when you look for it in this store, you know what you're looking for. But, um... In the store, it's called Chipotle seasoning. And I'm also going to juice, I think, two more limes into that. Okay, so I'm going to juice these limes. I'm super short, so I have to stand on my tippy toes to do this. They're probably laughing, like, why is she standing on her tippy toes to put stuff in the food processor? That's why. Because I'm really short. Okay. Alright, now I'm just going to run it for a couple more minutes and then we'll taste it again. Tastes better cold. That, that that looks like water. Oh no! It oh no! It's your finger. There's a chip. Tastes better cold. Yay. I know it tastes better cold. Robert's saying it tastes better cold, but he's gonna taste test it for us. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Mm, that's good. It's good. What would you want added to it? Oil, but you won't do it. <laughs> Besides oil, what would you want added to it? Oil. Besides oil. That's it. Okay, so other than oil, man, it's pretty tasty. Do you want to come taste it, Chris? Yes. Hmm. I don't taste good. I want to try this Bluetooth device. What's the Bluetooth device that you can Oh my God. You want to taste it with the chip or on a spoon? Chip. Well, you put the chips back up. I think it tastes good. Did you just give me a dirty look? Okay, here's Chris to taste it for us. All right, here we go. Very good. It's good, yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you think it needs anything? I like garlic and oil in mine. It has garlic in it. But I mean like, I like it. You know, I like garlic. More garlicky? Do you think it needs more garlic, Robert? I could add more garlic. Excellent though. Okay. Oil! All right, so we're just gonna say, it. we're gonna call it good. They can add their own garlic if they want more. All right, so this is how we make our batched, oil-free, nearly low-fat, we'll just call it low-fat, salt-free hummus. More stuff, more batch items going off on the oven. Okay, so until next time, live, eat, and eat hummus?